To be totally honest with you guys, I live in one of the most boring cities in the world. Or at least that is what everyone told me before I moved here. That is what the internet says. And that is what half my comments on TikTok say. But if you follow me on TikTok or maybe you know me from that, then you know that I definitely don't think Ottawa is boring. In fact, my entire page on TikTok is all about showing people all the best things to do in Ottawa. But I strongly believe some of the reasons people don't like Ottawa and the same reason why people hate so many different cities is because they don't romanticize it. And this is also why I love Ottawa because I romanticize romanticize it so much and it's among so many other reasons but I do think it's one of the really big ones and so I've had tons of people tell me that I've made them love Ottawa I made them see the city in a different light so I wanted to share some tips on how you can romanticize the place you live whether it's a big city whether it's a new city you've just moved to and you need some help falling in love with maybe it's your hometown that you can't leave or your college town whether it's a small town or a big city I'm going to show you how you can fall in love or back in love with the place where you live okay so you need to play tourist I am a bit type a and I can't help over researching. When I lived in Leeds in the UK, I had this massive list of hundreds of places I wanted to go, cafes I wanted to check out and restaurants I wanted to try. Kind of similar to what I do before I go on a trip and I feel like a lot of people make that list when they go traveling. So when we moved to Canada, I made this list for Edmonton, which is where we thought we were gonna move. And then I made this list for Vancouver as well, which is where we ended up moving and lived for about a year. And then now that we live in Ottawa, I have a massive list of all the places I wanna try. So if you're moving to a new city, I cannot recommend this enough but also if you've lived in a place for a while you should make a list of all the places you want to go as if you're traveling there as if you're a tourist and I also think making a list like this helps you realize how many things there are to do and it can also help you look at activities that you might not normally do as well so having this list means you can spend your days off like a tourist go to the museums do the tours do all the things you wouldn't normally do because you actually live in a city and they might be fun for someone visiting but why wouldn't they be fun for you as well they might feel a bit weird but they will make you love the place so much more trust me the next tip is if you feel involved, you will feel invested. If you feel connected to a place, you will enjoy it more, basically. Try your best to make small talk, to talk to people, to compliment people. In your day-to-day -day life, you'll just feel so much more connected to the place and to the community where you're living. You can also find groups, whether that's in person or online, and also through those groups, go to community events. I know here in Ottawa, a lot of community events are put on by small businesses, by coffee shops, by breweries, but they're not posted on social media. So you have two options here. Firstly, you need to be observed servant and keep an eye out for the posters, the whiteboards, the community boards, those kind of things and keep an eye out for events. And two, you can also follow people who have a bit of an insight to these events, which we will get to later. Tip number three is to look up and look around. So like we were talking about before, being observant, looking for signs, looking for things going on. Sometimes if you're looking at the same thing all the time, things can get to feel really mundane. I know this is a small change, but just try changing the eye line where you're looking when you're walking around the city, you're going about your everyday life. So if you're always on your phone, you're always looking down, you're seeing the same things all the time. So maybe listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, put on some headphones so you can actually look around. If this is on your daily commute or your daily walk, you can look at different things. If you're always taking the same route or sitting in the same place in a bus, for example, try sitting in a different place or taking a different route. This small change can actually make a really big impact with what you're seeing. And you also need to get lost. This kind of builds on from what I just said, but you need to let yourself wander. As someone who makes content about things to do in a small city, I think letting myself walk around is how I discover the most unique things to do. One of my favorite ways to spend a weekend with my boyfriend is to go to a place, probably a new suburb or a new town I haven't been to in the Ottawa area. I love to just park the car, leave it there and walk around the area rather than driving from like the cafe to the restaurant to the shops, whatever. On foot, you will notice so many more things. And if you park a little bit further away, if you park in maybe a different place and you let yourself walk, you will end up letting yourself just wander and like I said, get lost a little bit more and discover new things. And this all builds on top of each other because suddenly you're looking at new things, you have a different eye line, you're being observant, and you're able to romanticize the place around you. The next thing you can do is explore a bit further. This is one of my favorite things to do in Ottawa, and I have to admit, I get into quite a few arguments about it on TikTok, and I recommend something that's maybe 40 minutes, half an hour away, rather than 15 minutes away. People will say that's not in Ottawa, but you need to remember that your city, your local area, does not stop at the city boundaries, and it definitely doesn't stop in the downtown center. Obviously, things often have a higher concentration of things to do in the downtown, whether that's a big city or a small town, it's where most of the businesses are concentrated. But do not neglect checking out the suburbs and the small towns in the surrounding area. I promise there is so much to do out there, there is so much to enjoy and you will find it if you just broaden your horizons a little bit. Also trying something that is out of your routine, again, it can change your perspective and help you romanticize the place that you live so much. A lot of the tips so far have been about how to find new things that you want to do, but sometimes getting out of your comfort zone can be so much fun 
done and this tip is really about broadening your horizons and experiencing new things. So for example, classes or group events can be a really good way to get to know a new place or to fall back in love with a place that you've lived for a while. But they are also often really nerve wracking and can be a bit anxiety inducing to try hype yourself up to go to. But this kind of links to the tip that I was saying before where you have to act like a tourist. I promise doing these things that are a little bit out of your comfort zone will have such a big payoff. Also such a big part of romanticizing your life is sort of getting out of that autopilot mindset where you don't really notice the things going on around you and you're just moving through life in a way that feels really mundane and boring and you don't feel like you're in the present. So switching up your routine can really help you snap out of this autopilot because you have to think about what you're doing and you have to focus on the little things. And that is so much of what romanticizing your life is all about, is appreciating and thinking about the small little things. So this will help you slow down and truly romanticize your life. This is one of my favorite tips and I do this when I'm traveling, whenever I go to a new city. And I've also loved doing this at the place that I currently live. You need to look for media about the area that you live. If I discover a book that is set in Ontario, Canada, it is automatically bumped to the top of my TBR because I love reading books about places I've either been, places I'm gonna go to, or obviously places that I live in. But basically finding media from or about your local area can really help you see things from a different lens. It's swapping up your perspective again. And also often the lens is kind of artistic, which helps you romanticize it. But this doesn't just have to be books. Obviously books is a big one for me. It can be reading up on local history, whether that's going to your town's local museum, whether you're in a town like Ottawa where I am, obviously we're a capital. So we have tons of museums, or whether it's just your small local museum. I swear every small town I've been to has some kind of local museum. And again, if you don't have a museum, I highly recommend just looking up town history on the internet. There will be tons, even just looking up buildings that you think are cool. I literally looked up this building. It was like a pizza place in this old building when I was out in Kanata, Ottawa the other day. And I discovered this whole really cool thread of local history. It just makes life feel so much more connected, romanticized, and makes you appreciate the little things. You can also look at local folklore, which again, Again, that can be done through similar ways as history. Obviously finding books, movies, TV shows, and these can be either set in your area or with movies and TV shows, maybe they're not set there, but they're filmed there. So you can keep an eye out for locations you might know. Also listening to local musicians or finding local artists, whether that's historical or current artists. These are all such good ways to explore your area through a different lens and help you romanticize it. And a little hint to help with this, often local art galleries have a section for local artists or maybe it's little like gift stores. They might highlight local independent artists and then also local bookstores. I know Indigo around us highlights local authors and obviously independent bookstores often have a really big emphasis on local authors as well. And the last tip is to follow local content creators. Now I might be biased because I am an Ottawa based content creator and like I've said to you guys on YouTube I don't do tons of like particularly Ottawa based stuff but on TikTok that is my niche so I'm a little bit biased but this is one of the best things I've done when I've moved to a city and I also love creating content about my city. It's helped me romanticize and explore it so much. But if you follow people like me who are creating content about a city, you get to cut out so much work because there are so many content creators who spend days and hours trying to find the best things to do, going to test out all these places, leaving reviews, and then they just provide the information to you. Even if they're just showing you their day-to-day -day life, you get to see it through someone else's perspective, see the things they're doing. And I think it will really help you find some new, really fun things to do in your city. Obviously, if you live in Ottawa or Ontario or Canada, you should follow me on YouTube and TikTok or Instagram if you fancy it. But honestly, I cannot recommend following creators from your local area, whether they're big or small, cannot recommend it enough. So I really hope these tips have helped you look at some new perspectives on how to romanticize where you live, because I promise you don't have to live in a big city to romanticize your life. And that's coming from someone who technically lives in one of the most boring cities in the world. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like, Please do subscribe to see more content about romanticizing your life, cozy vlogs, all that kind of stuff. And I hope to see you guys next time.